Today we're going to do a new tangle called Mucha. The influence is from an artist called Alphonse Maria Mucha, who did most of his work late 1800s, early 1900s in an Art Nouveau style. I really like this, the style of his work. It's always had a certain fascination to me because he, he had such a distinct look. There was no questioning whether it was his work or not. Anyway, I thought we should do something to celebrate this guy's work. I'm going to show you one pod or one vessel. And it goes in, up, in and itself. And you just keep doing this until you run out of space. Not really a very technical way, but that's the basic mucha. It's sort of a pod or a uh, self-contained unit. And I don't know that any of the, our other patterns are like this. It's not unfurled, it's, it's infurled. infurled. It furls in upon itself. So I think we made up that word, did we? Yeah, I think that's one yeah, of those so. zentangle words. If we were to do this in a zentangle, putting our pencil string down. Say I wanted to fill up this center section here. I would start at a point. It starts at a point and then I'd start and you can see that this happens very quickly being one continuous line. And one thing to point out is, if you see where I'm zooming in here, all of those lines are pretty much the same distance apart. So which part is attached to which one becomes lost down at that starting point. So now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do it again. So what happens is this becomes very complex looking because you're doing multiples of these. And you can see whenever I come up to a, something in the way, I just, in Hollabaugh fashion, I just go behind it. So it fills up a space pretty quickly. And afterwards, if you, if you like, you can go into the spaces that are, are left bigger and just sort of put an inside aura to it. And that kind of adds to the mystique. Now I'm going to try it with a little more pizzazz. So now my pods are going to be unfurling as opposed to infurling. So this one's going to go out here. And here we're using that familiar Zentangle approach of always drawing behind. Kind of intermingle with this one. And this is all one line. So it's, it's a really great little play on anything that's possible one stroke at a time because this entire tangle component is one string, um, one stroke. The, the shape of the pod is, is pointy at one end so you can kind of insert it in a lot of different places.
We have some really exciting things that, that Rick and I have done in preparation for this. My style on this is, tends to be more flux-like, where I make the ends much more tapered and grow like leaves. And you can just do it in all sorts of styles. Here's one where I did the background all black with uh, little circles. and uh, You leave the center you can't let them all go in the middle because it's one of those Escher-like things that's impossible to actually exist. If you're going to color in the background, you can't color all the way to here because you would end up coloring all the lines because they're one continuous line. It's like a Mobius strip. And that particular one is two lines. So one half of it is one line, the other half of it is one line, and then I put in the circles. I was using Rick's um, shape a little bit more so you can see that your pods can have different looks depending on if they're just um, skinny strands like the ones I showed you in the beginning or if they're going to have this look like this. But again, you're going to go behind It's just such a beautiful form because when you look at it in that way, it's like this cluster of, uh, it's like a family. If I was going to shade this, I, uh, it's because of that, the way it's created, I would just put some accents here and there. Maybe indicating when it goes behind. once you get going that it's just so much fun to do this. And here you can see I was working with the tendrils going behind and focusing on that. So it's easy to, to fill up the tile quickly and if you want you can then put other tangles in, in through here. You can mix it with other, other patterns. This one was started in a circle and you can now see what used to look like all one big mess our, our individual pods, if anybody else has a, has a great thing to call this, you can see here's one right there, and there's one right there, there's one right here, but when they're put together, it's hard to tell which is which and where it came from. Here's one that Rick did that uh, is pretty cool. In this one, it's, it's some sort of fractal fun. There's a large mooka. And then within the one of the arms, there's another mukha. And then within the, that arm, there is another mukha. So it's like nested mukhas. Again, boy, once you get started with this stuff, it's really hard, hard to stop. So this is a, a, a look into my field notes book that I take with me all the time. And, and these are my original drawings for this pattern. It started actually with these bigger bulbous uh, tendrils and, and they, the pods are more obvious with these, I think. And this, this one almost just so organic looking. Yeah, I, I so was. At one was point it, it was going to be Mucha Gracias. Yeah, Muchacha or uh, Ali Muka, but we, we decided on the simpler term Muka, M O O K A, so nobody would be wondering how to pronounce it. And here's some other variations. Here we have some Crescent Moon and some striping. They're so much fun to do. I can't wait to see what you send because you're going to have your own take on this and that's what's going to make this beautiful is, is where you guys take it. So have a great time. And send us your mooka. Send us your mooka. And this is us. <laughs>